Hello, hello everyone. My name is Spela, and this is my sign name. I come from Slovenia. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Tina. This is my sign name. Uh, we've come here to talk about deaf culture, to present the joy and the achievements of deaf culture to all of you. Brilliant. So, what are, what are we going to present now? If, you know, there are many kinds of deaf people in the world, right? People who have been born with deafness, people who acquired deafness along their lives, people who are genetically deaf, who inherited from the parents, people who uh, acquired it later in life. So, yeah, Tina's saying there are many different ways to experience deafhood, like hypocusics, People who have hearing issues, hearing problems that can be solved with hearing aids. People who use hearing aids or even a cochlear implant. So there's a wide range and variety of deaf people. Spella is saying, I mean, some people do want to use a hearing aid. Some people choose not to. It's something that's a personal choice. Right, Tina? Yes, uh, for different people, it's a different experience, whether you have some hearing um, capabilities still or not. So, as you can see, how are Tina and I communicating? We communicate thanks to sign language, right? Uh, and as you might as well know, Sign language is not the same across the world. There are many, many, many different sign languages around the world, around the globe. For instance, Slovenian and Croatian sign languages are somewhat close, but Slovenian and German sign language, they couldn't be more different. So that you know. Yeah, we have in Slovenia, we, well, right now, we are using international sign language. International sign language is not a proper natural organic language. It, was, it is a means, it is an artificial means that deaf people came across so that they could speak to each other at international events. Sorry, my image went away, it's okay. So it's the same international sign has many visual and um, classificators and many visual items that make it understandable. But it is actually true that it has a very limited uh, vocabulary or lexicon. So we both, Tina and I, belong to the deaf community. And as members of deaf community, we have experienced that there are many differences across countries. For instance, Slovenia is a very tiny country and the deaf community is tiny as well. Some of the places have stronger ties and stronger stances within, within the community. But we share the joy of expressing in our own natural language, even though in some places we see that there is a medical approach that doesn't enable people deaf people to speak their own natural language. That's a struggle in every deaf community, I think. 
in every country due to this medical approach. And Tina, for this, uh, many people living. in different countries can account for very different experiences. Some communities have a stronger support from institutional agencies, some others have a lesser support. For instance, in my case, I have to pay for interpreters myself. I have around 200 hours of interpreting hard. Some of the places, and for some of the people in some of the countries, it might get trickier, it might get more difficult. I am happy to see that Slovenian interpreters and Slovenian hospitals, in Slovenian uh, community services, are starting to learn the, importances, the importance of having an interpreter, even though it's a struggle, even though we still have barriers. Yes, it is the same uh, when you understand uh, the history, when you understand how deaf people before could not communicate, you know, along with subtitles or text or via text, or when you understand the struggles of deaf people in the regular ordinary school system without any support, having to do uh, lip reading, having to remember the lecturers and the professors to not cover their mouths. So as I was saying, uh, we face, over time, we face more or less with the same barriers, even though there have been achievements. Uh, Um, in the study programs and in the school system, it was it was hard. It was hard to be a deaf person. Now we have integrated classrooms, and we have classrooms where lecturers understand the need of articulating slowly and clearly for deaf students who classrooms that have interpreters, signing people or sign language experts present in the classroom. Both Tina and I come from a deaf family. My own parents, they, they have a lesser understanding of sign language. I was not a fully signing person till I was 13. Right now, I go everywhere with an interpreter. I've learned how to um, lip read, and this has done life much better for me. And sign language is of the utmost importance for deaf person, I would say, in my experience, having gone through different stages in my communication skills. For me, Tina saying, I, I had this, I remember supporting my parents, uh, writing at the doctor's office for them so that they could understand this. But communication was nearly impossible. It was pretty difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. I'm happy. I think this is a subject that everybody should know. It is not, I mean, it's not, we are not, we're not trying to pin the blame on anybody. It's just, we, we're just trying to inform people 
whenever we do these declarations. Um, yeah, negative history aside, uh, we need to understand that right now, you know, we feel deathhood and being part of the deaf community is a positive. Yes, uh, Tina's saying, I mean, uh, deaf community is dynamic, it's vibrant, and it is pretty tight. And for instance, we don't get disturbed at noisy places. That would be a perk. So, and as well, as I was saying, we can communicate no problem at a longer distance. We can, we can communicate through a translucent, translucent um, glass when hearing people cannot because they don't hear themselves. And for instance, if you can, I guess you can imagine that we can communicate underwater as, as well, whereas hearing people cannot. So to sum up all of this, Tina is saying, yes, Bella saying, for instance, do you, yeah, we could talk about facial expression, about the importance of, uh, you know, when you sign cold or true the face, the way we use our face and our facial muscles, it's pretty important. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be useful part. That's, that's something we get to practice a lot. That's true. And then saying, for instance, many people uh, ask themselves, wonder whether deaf people can drive or not. Yeah, we can drive. Of course. I mean, we have two eyes and we have a very pitchy spatial and visual awareness of what, what is around us. We are more than capable drivers. Sorry again, and as I was saying, I mean, we are more than not, more than capable of seeing an ambulance, for instance, behind us and make room for them so that they can pass us by, or we can, you know, have an understanding of traffic and circulation. And I think we, spell as continuing, I think we have a better understanding of uh, spatial, I think we have a better spatial awareness than hearing people uh, while we can still enjoy the view but we are very we are very proficient in that another perk another positive aspect of being a deaf person let me think i for instance uh, in a city or at home i don't get bothered by traffic noise by neighbors, noises. Yeah, but on the other side, we don't hear a telephone ringing or the door of somebody, or that somebody's at the door. Um, but fortunately, there are many, there are many devices, visual devices, that cast light so that we can understand that there is somebody at the door or that the telephone is ringing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can, for instance, alarm clocks, we can, you know, we can feel the vibration just all right so that we can, <laughs> we can make the bed shaky so that we can wake up or, use some light-based alarm clock that as well. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. And do you, do you actually prefer vibrating devices than light devices? Yeah, 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 like, I like to feel that the, that the bed is shaking. Yeah, 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 me too, as well. For instance, uh, when you think about it, we cannot, function at places that are very dark. 
I mean, we need, yeah, yeah, I've, I've been in places where I've had to use my cell phone torch so that I could see the people in front of me. That's actually true. And yeah, what else? What else? I was thinking. When I'm surrounded by hearing people, I don't know, with two, three people, it is easy. I can cope, I can function. But when groups get larger and I need to be looking all around, it gets, it gets harder. That's hard. Yeah, it's Tina saying, yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, I guess hearing people have a, are less patient than deaf people. They, they have a much faster faster pace when talking and they don't respect uh, turns that much. Yeah, yeah, that's, that is true. That is true, spell saying. But I think, I mean, yeah, I get, I, I get told uh, that uh, a lot as well. But besides that, Tina saying, uh, yeah, that would be, again, a negative aspect of being a deaf person. I, but carrying on with the positives, I, I think, for instance, I don't know, if I'm sleeping, I'm in bed, and it's raining cats and dogs outside, or the traffic is crazy, and there's a lot of noise outside, I, I just don't mind. I, I, I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so to speak, I I don't get I don't get annoyed or bothered. And spell is continuing. We have so many different cultures uh, within the deaf world uh, and different ways of understanding the identity of being deaf. It is true that I mean. For us, being youngsters and being young people, it is very important to travel and to get to know as much of them as we can. Yeah, Tina saying that we, you know, it's something that it's enriching, sharing the ideas. I guess for hearing people, it's the same, but we, as deaf people, we sh can manage ourselves when traveling. We can. Yeah, it depends, of course, on the age and on the experience of every one of us, of each of us. But I think we can get to, to travel, to get different cultures and to feel, and to feel comfortable around deaf people from another country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so important. Yes. And for instance, for hearing kids, They need to, yeah, when, it, is, it is kind of the same with deaf, with deaf kids. I mean, you can, along with sign language, sign language interpreters or sign experts, you can, you can teach them uh, just the same as hearing kids at school right now with, with what we know now. I believe that inclusion and promoting and enhancing deaf kids and deaf youngsters so that they can be the most they can be is is the less the lesser any any country can be yes and yeah it's the same you know when you have support from your family I mean, it is the same for hearing kids. I mean, hearing kids need the support of their families and of their parents. For us, it's just the same. It can be, for some parents, it can be hard. It can be a hard experience, you know, being hearing people, having a deaf kid. But they, they need to switch, need to make some changes in their life, maybe learning sign language, maybe to adapt. But I think that's an effort that ultimately pays off you have a kid that's um, self-sufficient and happy. 
I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, being, we can be deaf, but we can adapt to hearing culture as well, and we can love the same, both cultures, even though deaf culture could be our own. Yeah, you know, saying, I mean, I feel like I feel thanks to the support of my parents. Uh, I believe, I mean, it is, of course, you know, my main channel of communication is the visual one. I guess if I had been born blind, they would have provided me with hearing input, hearing support. So it's kind of the same. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of saying I wouldn't have put it better. Uh, great phrasing. Yes, yes, you're right. And, you know, we have, even as deaf people, we have the ability and the joy and the uh, will to dance and to enjoy music through vibration and through other means as well. I mean, some deaf people do not care or about music or do not, are not really good dancers, but so are hearing people. So we are in the same circumstances. I, I'm afraid that, I mean, it's, it's I, I, to me, I feel it's the same for both communities. Yeah, I feel that we as deaf people, we are mainly visual and tactile and we rely on our smelling senses. We like hearing. But we have very enhanced uh, sense senses that we can fully use and fully take advantage of. That's how I feel about that. Yeah, spell is saying yeah. That's right. That's pretty much right. So I see, you know, when I when I'm alone, uh, hearing people at the bar or at the club, I can see people, you know, voicing to songs and, and dancing. You know, I think I think you know, moving. Maybe I cannot voice to the sound, but I can move to it. And I can. And I think it's much better. I think we have a very good sense of rhythm, don't we? Tina? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I. One important thing that I forget to say uh, about deaf culture yeah, hearing people have a different sense than deaf people regarding movement. For instance, we normally uh, look straight to the people or to the person that we are talking to. We never, I mean, you, hearing people normally, I mean, they can talk backwards or move these other sides. We are very conscious about always facing the persons that we are talking to. And being expressive. And, I mean, sign language is high. Besides sign language, we can understand facial expressions and facial information. I mean, uh, we can understand when somebody's bum, when somebody's hungry, when somebody's sad, only by the body movement and facial expressions. I think we are very good at that. Yeah, I think the same. Um, I think we, and we also l let away, we give away our own emotions very, very straightforwardly. I mean, I think it is pretty straightforward to read how somebody's feeling. I have a sense that the hearing people do not pay that much attention to it. That's true. That's actually very true. And
Men jeg tænker, ja, ja, hvordan people rely um, on the spoken word, for instance, we can whenever we go to the doctor, for instance, alone, we can feel when when somebody is being grumpy or when somebody is pretty serious about something or that we are not received that well. And then we have, I guess we have very different experiences in that regard. And yeah, I would like to talk about the deaf mute, the deaf mute or deaf and dumb or deaf and mute work. It's something that shouldn't go together. I mean, it's not, I mean, we have the ability as Tina was pointing out to, to voice and to other words. Some people might just choose not to. But uh, that doesn't mean that we are deaf and mute. For some people, it is pretty hard to use their voice. For some others, it's pretty easy. It depends. Um, you need to know or you need to be aware, or people should be aware that we have, for somebody who's born deaf, um, they have no connection with their voice, actually. So they cannot modulate that well. For people who acquire deafness later on, they can, maybe. Yeah, I was born deaf, Stella saying, I, I wasn't using my voice that well. I went to speech therapy for nine years. Now uh, I've progressed, yes, on that regard, and I've gotten better and better. But for instance, you know, uh, you were born, yeah, I was, I was born as a hearing person, yes. I was, I became deaf at the age of two. Um, after, um, after serious illness, and then for instance, I can, you know, I can speak to somebody who's close to me or I can speak on the phone, yes. yes, yes. So do you use your voice, right, Tina? Yeah, 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 I do, I do. Oh, on that regard, you are better than me. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> you're doing great, Stella, as well. Yeah, I think, I think. Oh, we have... I mean, now, right now, we are using international sign. Normally, regularly, we use Slovenian sign, but there's one thing that is common to every language. I mean, we don't translate or we don't go word by word taken from spoken languages. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me redirect. For instance, we don't say drop a friend at their place, at their house. We don't say word by word. We would phrase it in a different way, the way it just did. Yeah, Dina saying um, the facial expression in place a very important role as well. Yes, our grammar, Stella's continuing, is completely different from most uh, spoken languages, yes. Something else I, I would like to ask you, Tina. How do you feel? Uh, how do people, you know, reach for your attention and stuff? Yeah, some people was pretty, pretty mm, gross in that way, pretty rude. I mean, you shouldn't tap somebody unpolitely on the shoulder. You can use the lights, switch them on and off. Oh, for instance, I mean, 
at a hotel or at a big gathering. I mean, if you start waving your hands and shouting and stuff, you will get no reply from a deaf group. But if you use the lights, you will. And for instance, what I mean, what do you prefer? You know, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing, I'm passing the ball to you. I mean, uh, or you know, sometimes people just throw things to call for your attention, which is, I mean. Within deaf community, it's quite, quite normal, I think. Uh, among friends, yes, yes, for instance, I don't know, I, I can be, you know, on the phone, if I leave my phone somewhere else and, and stuff, I'll get, I, it will, Get me some time to reach for it, maybe in, even if it's five minutes. But yeah, yeah, I'll, I will just, I don't know, I will just make a mess and turn the lights on and off to call somebody's attention. For instance, me as well. <laughs> and I'm throwing bottles of water or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know if we left something uncovered. I know if people know. I guess for the main. I mean, is it easy to understand or to communicate in some language? I mean, it is easier than people might think. At least to try, or at least the basics. It's not that hard. And of course, we can go by with interpreters, but if people try, to, I mean, you don't need to study sign language to reach the level of an interpreter. But I mean, everybody can try, and it would, and it makes a great deal for us. Yeah, I guess hearing people need a lot of patience, and and we need a lot of patience with. With hearing people, we need to try and try and try to get communication uh, reach somewhere. Most people lose patience and they just quit trying to communicate with us. But I mean, it's no nobody's fault. I mean, we use different systems, different methods. And I guess I, if I could ask for something, I would ask hearing people for more flexibility, for more adaptability. I guess because people get frustrated and we don't get to communicate with them on the first try. And of course, the different people will have different experiences with this. Yes, yes. I, I mean, we, we shouldn't think in terms of blame or mistakes or errors. I guess it is something we can always benefit, we can all benefit from. Um, and sign language can benefit a great deal of people um, with impairments and the different conditions and from every walk of life. And we're just doing the same as blind people or people in a wheelchair, raising awareness of our needs. Um, just to make our lives a little bit more easier. And we need to go step by step. Yeah, Tina's saying step by step. Yeah, that's it, true. Great, so I'm very happy. Uh, uh, Tina and I are very happy um, to be on this project, to be on this video. I couldn't be, I couldn't have a better partner to do this than you, Tina. Yeah, it's the same for me. It's a great pleasure. Thanks for calling me to do this, to have this conversation. And yeah, Paths to Inclusion, it's an Erasmus Plus project that 
I would like to present. I think it's run by great people, by a great community, and I just love it. And thanks, Tina. I love you. Thank you very much. Bye.